These are just a few notes on translation memory suites. Uh, following on from what we had from Massimo from SDL. Uh, why do we, got, do we have those uh, videos from SDL? Well, because I'm too lazy to do them myself. Yeah, partly. But also because uh, that is a discourse that's coming from industry. And uh, what the industry says about the technologies is important. SDL, because they developed, well, they bought and have further developed uh, Trados. They've invested heavily in technologies. But then there's also an academic discourse. And I want to just pay attention to some of the terms which might be problematic there. As you've seen, they talk about CAT tools, uh, computer assisted or aided translation. I like to talk about translation memory suites. The suite is just a sequence of tools. Uh, the main one is the translation memory, and then you get these other tools uh, packaged with it in the software. Philosophical difference, perhaps, not, a, not an important one. Uh, confusing, though, is the fact that they talk about a translation unit as being the union of an ST segment with a TT segment, and they're calling that a translation unit. I'm using translation unit for the psychological or cognitive study sense of the amount of ST that is processed in order to produce a TT. So there are two very different meanings there, or one from uh, industry, the other from cognitive studies. Beware, you just have to be aware that there are different senses in those two different fields. Uh, for what they're calling the translation unit, I prefer to use an old term proposed by Brian Harris many years ago, bitext. A bitext is the STTT union that goes into the translation memory database. Uh, there again, uh, the term base of what SDL calls a term base, which is good, it's just a list of terms I tend to call a glossary. No real difference, just two different names, okay? Um, they call a database any set of information. That's fine, that's standard. I have no problem with that. Database is a very general term. And then there's a few uh, specific terms that might confuse you when uh, industry is talking about technology. For example, an asset. Asset is anything that you have in your company or in your project that is going to help you do the translation better. So the asset would obviously be a, a term base or glossary. It would be a translation memory uh, built up. It might be a set of rules. It might be a get, set of stylistic guidelines. Uh, those are all assets, all right? It's just a very, very general term. And then they use the verb to leverage a lot. Uh, to leverage is simply to extract information from one format and use it for another. Okay, uh, And they can be used in several metaphorical senses. But it really means to, to make the most of something that's in one format uh, transfer, transferred to another. Now, what interests me most is not the discourse as such, the terms, it's the philosophy behind the use of translation memories. And that philosophy is one of text reuse. The basic proposal is that what we say in one context can be said and therefore translated in exactly the same way in another context. Uh, and that's the whole basis of it. If, if, if that were not true, then there would be no reason for translation memories, okay? Now, uh, pragmatics tells us that it is true, that what we say in one context has a meaning there, and it can have a different meaning in another context. Okay? And so that, if we look at uh, uh, theories of discourse analysis, etc., that, that seems to be true. However, it does work. In many, many instances, the way you translate the ST in one context is valid 
for the way you translate it in another. So there is no cutoff point, you know, between bad theory and good theory. And in fact, if you think about it, I mean, really think about it, what does language do? When we grow up and we learn a language, we start experimenting with different words to see if that word works in a particular context. And we learn that the same word or set of words or expressions does seem to work in similar contexts, and that's how we build up meaning. So uh, language itself is based on the idea that what is said in one context can be said in another. Uh, that's why we have frequency lists, you know, expressions that are used very, very frequently in language. They are useful and used in a whole lot of contexts. And then we have some particular terms that do change meaning according to context. So, so don't dismiss this philosophy out of hand. Think about what Massimo said there in those two videos. And now ask yourself, based on what he said there, are these technologies helping us translate in terms of the linguistic transformational model that we had, or in terms of the functional action model that we had? Remember those two different models that we had of the uh, cognitive processes? I think if we look at the technology and at the discourse, you'll find that it is mostly in the first, uh, in the linguistic transformational. Okay, it's based on text reuse, which is the linguistics of um, the linguistics of the same thing being valid, no matter what the context. Okay, the use of fuzzy matches is very, very much transformational. It suggests, oh, it's exactly the same translation. I just have to transfer, transform this one thing. We'll see an example in a minute. Okay, so they're transforming from previous sentences. And very much the aim is equivalence in a rather restrictive sense. Uh, you'll see the software says if there's a sentence on one side, there should be a sentence on another. You can change that, you can merge things, you don't have to do it, but the software sort of makes you think in a sentence for sentence way. Uh, it's very, very difficult to omit things. It doesn't really want you to, you can do it. And it doesn't really want you to add things if you have to explain something for a new reader in a new context. So it's very, very much in tune with uh, what we might call formal equivalence. Go backward then. Uh, why fuzzy matches work? There's a spelling mistake there. Why fuzzy matches work? Okay, here's an example. We've got that sentence at the top with uh, three steps, and perhaps they've revised it because we have to revise it because things are changing with viruses, and the three step becomes four steps. Obviously, you're not going to translate the whole sentence again. You're going to pick up the previous translation and do that one transformation. And we are very much in the equivalence linguistic model, the, the way of thinking. Okay. So here's the way that looks in our translation memory suite. And what you can see here is that you can't see a context. It's very hard to see it. Okay, it's segmented, the sentences over here. And over here is where you're going to do the translations. And obviously three steps up there becomes four steps up here. And you're relying on what's in the memory when it was translated previously. No context in sight. And your mind is invited to focus very much on the linguistic details of the sentences. Let's go on. If we then look at this discourse or at translation memories for what they've got of the functional action type model, imagine, imagining what's normal to say in the new scene, 
Well, the only thing we can find is the recommendation, and a very good one, that your, uh, your assets, that is your translation memories and your glossaries, should be stored for each field you're working in, or indeed for each client, since your clients tend to work in the same field. Unless it's a very big client, you might want to break it up into different fields. Why do you do that? Well, because the way you translate does depend on the context, but context can be generalized and formalized in the way that we construct our databases. Okay, that is the translation memories or glossaries. Good. You're going to see how all of that works when we actually get into using the uh, translation memory system. For the moment, though, just out of interest, uh, be aware that what the technology does is move us more towards one kind of cognitive activity, linguistic, transformational, equivalence-based, and away from another. As Massimo says, you have to watch it. You have to check what you're doing.